Okay, brilliant. So welcome to our community chat for this month. So we've got the heading of Build Your Tribe today. Um, Helen and I were really conscious that we don't want to do another session on return to work because there's plenty of that out there. And if you haven't already overdosed on the <laughs> terrifying return to work information, feel free to do that, but we don't want to talk about it because it's all just too <laughs> scary, too clinical, we don't like it. So we're going to talk about other things today, which hopefully will leave you feeling refreshed and excited about returning to work, hopefully. So um, what I would uh, like to do before we make a start on our content is just to get you guys to introduce yourselves to each other. So keep it really short because the more we talk, the less time we've got to cover the other things. And I'm aware we do this over lunchtime, but there's a reason for that. I know a few of you have said, this is not great. You do this over lunch, but it means that we finish sooner because we're hungry. So it's <laughs> otherwise we'd be here like six o'clock still talking oils and clients and everything else. So it helps us to keep it short. So I would love for you just to kind of go around our virtual kitchen table, introduce yourself, name, maybe where you're based. And then in the chat box, I would love if you put your social media handles so we can follow each other and stay connected through social media as well. So Helen, I might as well just start with you if that's all right absolutely hi everybody um, i'm helen nagel smith i'm in milton keynes just outside milton keynes and it's fiddling it down with rain here <laughs> perfect the farmers of milton keynes will be happy as well indeed okay, good. thank you wendy you're next on my screen can you introduce yourself please? hi i'm wendy and i'm near both st edmunds and suffolk perfect thank you wendy helen Hi, um, I'm Pat Lem and I'm based in Bristol. Perfect, thank you, Helen. Claire Stone, Stone Temperance. Oh, yeah. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Mandala so Madness. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If anybody doesn't know Claire Stone and the <laughs> magic that she creates, please go and head to her social media. But be aware, put your purse under lock and key. Thank <laughs> God. Okay, before you venture there. But literally just looking at Claire's social media will make you so much happier on a rainy Thursday. Okay, uh, locked, lockdown creativity. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Claire Stone and I'm based in Derby, but you might tell from the accent I'm a northern bird, so mm -hmm. originally yeah. from the northeast, Saltburn by the sea. Oh, lovely, thank you so much. Hello for Sam. Sam. <laughs> you guys know each other as well. Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Sam, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, hi, I'm Sam Colvard. I'm from just outside Southampton on the south coast. It's dry, a bit overcast today, but we had lots of rain yesterday, so hopefully the sunshine's heading your way. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would be nice, that really would be nice. Emily? Hi, I'm Emily, I'm in Ludlow, Shropshire. I love Ludlow. Uh, Nefra? I'm Nefra, um, I'm in Milton Keynes, just down the road from Helen. And it's actually not raining here at the moment. It has been all morning, but it's dry right now. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Enjoy that while you've got it. Uh, Trish? Hi everybody, I'm Trish Drain and I'm in Aikley, just outside Buckingham. It's okay. dry at the moment. Oh, that's good. We've had rain. <laughs> We're having a great weather report from around the UK today. It's <laughs> awesome. It's probably the most accurate weather report ever reported. <laughs> and Linz, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Lindsay. I'm in Derbyshire, so I'm not far from Claire, so just down the road from her. Do you guys know each other? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Oh, that's so nice. We've just had a, we've just had a distance uh, reflexology session this morning, haven't we? Yeah, Malaya. amazing. That's really <laughs> nice. Oh, lovely. We like friends like that. <laughs> Mandy? Oh, you're on mute, Mandy. I can't unmute you. Sorry. Hello. Oh, yeah. Hi, lovely. So Mandy from Teddington, um, for those that don't know where Teddington is, um, in between Hampton Court and Richmond. Very nice. Thank you, Mandy. Claire? Hello. Hi, lovely. Um, I'm Claire. I'm near the Essex-Hertfordshire border. I'm disappointed you haven't got company today. 
They yeah. are. I've got one down in the garden, one upstairs. Did you lock them outside? <laughs> Go and play out in They're the digging. rain. They're digging. They're digging. No, we, we just ran to the ducks. I thought I'd just tie them out a little bit to oh, try and give job. myself a bit of peace. So I hope I can join in. Oh, good job. Um, Meg? Hi, yeah, I'm Meg. Hi. I'm in Prison Edmonds, just down the road from Wendy. And then we've got sunshine coming out, actually. So oh, I have. <laughs> that is really nice. Nikki? Uh, let me see if I can unmute you. I can't unmute you. You have to unmute yourself if that's okay. Yeah. Have, 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 Am have, I with you? Yes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nikki and I'm based just outside of Southampton too, Sam. So, um, yeah. Do you guys know each other as well? No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> only through, I think we've been on, um, I think we've been on similar. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we have. With you, yeah. So yeah. I know yeah. I'm already following you on social media and I think you've returned the favour. Oh, oh so nice. Fantastic. Donna, you got on you. <laughs> I, I did. Can you hear me? Yes. Brilliant. Thank I know. You. A computer said no, um, mobile says yes. Perfect. So, um, I'm, in, I'm in Margate, um, sunny-ish Margate right now. That's so, nice. yeah. It's really nice. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Susan? Hi, I'm Hi. Susan and I'm in Bedford. And I'm not being antisocial, but I will switch my camera off because um, family members will be coming and going in the kitchen. And this is the only room in the house that I get a good signal. So, <laughs> oh, you're all right. Don't worry. So. Although I will be disappointed not to see your children head into the fridge because I always think it's <laughs> not just me. Not just me, thank goodness. <laughs> well, I can keep it on if you want, but I didn't think people would want to see my fridge. Oh, no, it doesn't bother me. Too. I feel like I'm in it with you. And also, I'm very impressed that you don't go, <laughs> which is what my response normally is. No, that's for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll keep, I'll keep my face showing. <laughs> you don't have to if you don't want to. It's absolutely fine. And Bianca. Um, ah, hello. hello, everyone. Hi. I first time here. I received the invitation, and I'm based in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Oh, it's so good to see. And how's South the weather here, Bianca? Yeah. Well, the sun is shining. He doesn't want to show himself, but I hope, hope soon he, he'll be here with us. <laughs> yes. Oh, how lovely. Well, that's comforting. Okay, so welcome, everybody. It's so, so good to have you here. And um, Helen and I both really look forward to these sessions of hanging out with you. We feel like we have a virtual cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and hang out with people that um, we really like to connect with. So thank you so much for coming. Um, Helen, do you want to take over? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Helen. So um, can everybody, if you haven't already got one, get a pen and paper would be good, or a notebook or something, just so you can write notes if you need to. Give you a minute in case anybody needs to run and do that. Um, okay, so um, we're going to talk about obviously building your tribe. So um, we may or may not return to work in July. We don't know that yet. We know we need to meet all the criteria. Um, and in this period of time, some of you may have had some contact with your clients. So some of you may have had some contact. Some of you may have had no contact. And some of you may have had some new clients. Can we just do a little show of hands for everybody who I can see? Has anybody had some new clients during this time? Ooh, interesting. Yeah, interesting. So that's about a third of everybody's had some new clients. Okay. So as we draw closer to going back, so whether you go back in July or August or September, whatever it is that that looks like for you, we're not going to worry about when it's going to be just now because we want to keep this uplifted. But you need to have that level of interaction with our clients beforehand because if we take our foot off the pedal and have no contact let's just say for example you're going back in september and you've made that decision for whatever reason um then if you do that and you've had no contact with your clients since march that's um a six month period i'm just doing the maths in my head as i'm speaking <laughs> that's a six month period of no contact whatsoever with your clients um, so it's going to mean, you know, some people will kind of disappear a little bit, other people will go quiet and then come back. So 
we felt it was useful to think about building a tribe just in case of kind of like that building a momentum before we go back to work. So whatever that looks like for you, and there's no right or wrong, whenever you go back and whenever we're given the go ahead to go back, um, to just put a bit of time in now to just building our tribe, if you like. So what do we mean by building a tribe? Um, it's a bit of a term that you hear sort of used quite a lot now. And I found a nice quote because I thought this was the easiest way to get a description of something. I like using other people's quotes because they're far more eloquent than I am. So um, this one is from um, a, um, a blog on snip.com. And it says, while it's not a new term, tribal marketing, the practice of identifying consumers as a group based on common collective behaviors rather than de demographics is becoming increasingly popular. These customers set themselves apart with a shared way of thinking, common experiences and lifestyle. So traditionally, we might have thought of our tribe as just being our clients that we already see, but it's much wider than that, isn't it? It's our, um, it's our family, our friends, our supporters, people that share your Facebook posts, those kinds of things. And I think more than anything, this period of time has shown us that we don't have to have clients who are nearby, do we? You know, traditionally, actually, we may have been just, um, for example, a lot of my work, all of, pretty much all of my work was hands-on. So although I was giving some talks and things like that, I was always doing aromatherapy massage or I was doing massage in offices and things like that. I didn't do any distance work with anybody. I just didn't. I thought about doing it for a long time. It was only lockdown that kind of made me actually get my get myself into gear and actually do it um, so it's interesting to think about actually how we how we build um, our kind of a community that supports our business so when we had one of these community chats I don't know taking your mind back because I know quite a few of you have been on several of them to one what feels like many moons ago um, but it was just a few months ago we asked you to think about um, what your business would look like going forwards so just want to give you a moment just to have another think about that again, because if you don't know what your business is going to look like going forwards when you go back to work, if we don't know what that's going to look like, how on earth can we communicate our offerings to people? Does that make sense? So just a few thoughts. You might want to write these down. Think about your business. Will it go back to how it was before? but incorporating everything according to our guidelines. So obviously some of that is gonna change because we can't necessarily work straight away in the same way that we would have worked. But are you going to try and get your business to as much as it was before? Will your business change? Will you keep some of the things that you have been doing during lockdown? Things that perhaps you weren't doing before. So that could be online consultations. It could be making up products. You may have been writing. You may have been doing more teaching, whatever it is that you were doing. So will you keep some of the things you've been doing in lockdown and incorporate those into your business moving forwards? And then finally, who are the people who should be following you and joining your tribe? So I'm gonna let Karen take over at this point. Okay, um, thanks Helen. Um, some really good points for us to kind of consider there, which is great. Um, but I also think that um, preparing ourselves to go back to work is really important. So you maybe have already started considering preparing yourself as far as PPE and what your insurance says and all of the official and um, 
things that we need to know about and the guidelines and all, all I want to say really boring stuff, but I know that's the really bad thing to say, but you know what it is, I mean. Um, well, hopefully you do. The necessary but, stuff, Karen. That's <laughs> right. This is why we're a good team. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, so there is a lot out there for you to read up on on preparation for returning to work, cleaning, hygiene. Uh, for those of you who are looking to do a course, the WHO, the World Health Organization, got a really great course that you can do teaching you how to wash your hands. Hopefully, you knew how to wash your hands already, but if you didn't, then we'll work on hands, and then we'll start working on teeth as well. But hopefully, uh, you knew how to wash your hands. But they have a really great course on um, hygiene and just really to prepare us that we know we're doing everything that we possibly can to keep ourselves safe, to keep our family safe if we're treating from home and then also our clients as well. All of this can be quite scary, quite clinical and so far removed from what it is that we love about our job. I don't know whether you think about, so this morning I was considering what am I going to put on my couch? Am I going to put one of those <laughs> waterproof covers that my children used to have on their beds? Now I remember actually when they had those on their beds, every time they turned over, I could hear <laughs> I could hear the noise. And I just think, oh my God, what's that gonna be like in Massad? It's going to all this like rubber and waterproofness, it's going to look like one of those. What was that term they used about us in the press? I really hate it. Um massage parlors actually we're going to end up like something that resembles a massage parlor with all this waterproof stuff going around anyway i'm laughing about something that's very serious but that's a kind of that's my uh, response um but it is so very far removed um from what it is that we love about our work the soft towels and the warm blankets and the heated pad and oh my gosh so it is uh, setting us up into a space that is quite unfamiliar and that in itself can bring a little bit of fear. Um, so many therapists have read the guidelines and I'm not sure if everybody's a member of IFPA but um, as um, IFPA board we sent out the guidelines this week and that has prompted conversations between uh, therapists as is this actually going to be worth my worthwhile me even returning to work? I mean um, you know, it's some of the thoughts going through um, many aromatherapists' minds. So, I, we, Helen and I, are not government agencies. We're not membership bodies um, that are going to recommend that you do this and you do that. What we are, uh, working therapists. So, what we're going to do is, uh, what I'm going to expand on next, is preparing you for returning to work um, and then the first thing that I'm going to recommend that you do is to, or ask you, actually ask you with a show of hands, has anybody not been to their treatment room since it closed on the 23rd of March? Yeah, and me. I've, I've been in my home treatment room. I haven't been in my studio since it closed. I did go back once and it upset me so much. I was like, I can't go in there again. Not until I'm able to go in there. But for those of you that maybe haven't ventured into your treatment rooms, I know for some it might be impossible because it's, it's based within another space and that makes it harder. But for some people, um, they've got access to the treatment room and they're not going there because it just feels a little bit too raw. Um, and I totally understand that. But it might be that rather than thinking about the massive task of the return to work and what that looks like. It might be time to go and sit in your treatment room for you to start enjoying your treatment room a little bit. So I'm going to read out some notes I made this morning. Is it time to open the door again, to clean it, not COVID cleaning, but a spring clean, remembering the space that you loved spending time in, not going in there thinking about rubber sheets and washing and new towels and everything else, but going in there just to start to fall in love with the space again. Is it possible that you might be able to spruce it up? If you bought new linen for your couch, let's get it on the couch. Let's lie on it. What does it feel like? What is the experience? 
of being in your treatment room. It's not necessarily going to be a bad experience. Can you create a new music playlist for your treatment room? Rather than thinking, oh my gosh, this is going to be so different. Why don't we think, oh my gosh, this is going to be so different. New music, new blankets or new linen could be so nice. If you've got linen that you can put on the couch, spend some time lying on your couch. 15 minutes prone, 15 minutes supine. Listen to your music. It might be, I have a chair in my treatment room, probably gonna to have to change that, but I have a chair in my treatment room that I like to sit and it looks down the length of my couch. And I like to sit there and do a gratitude meditation for the people who lie on my couch. Is it possible that you could sit in your treatment room and just do a breathing meditation or just give some time for gratitude for the people who are going to come in. Does it feel like a nice space to sit? And if not, what could you do to change it? To make it a really lovely, safe experience. If it feels really good for you, it's going to be so much easier to sell that to your clients to return. Tell them, yes, it's safe, yes, it's hygienic, but sell the experience. This is what we need to be telling our tribe. There's no need for you to worry about cleanliness and hygiene and my washing and everything else. All that's going to do is fear the fuel, fuel the fear that there is something to be fearful about. They already trust you with the most precious thing they own, their bodies. So why would they expect anything else than you to be providing somewhere clean and safe and you've taken into account everything else? So let's sell the experience. So time to open up your treatment room. If you haven't got a treatment room at home, but you've got a couch at home, set up your couch. You play the new music. How does that feel? Is it nice music? Is it a bit fast? Is it too slow? Is it boring? Ex experience that and then tell people, just been experiencing my new playlist. Oh my gosh, you're gonna love it. It's gonna be so nice. Um, make it as luxurious as an experience as you possibly can to be able to sell that to them. So I have bought, I have always used um, fleece blankets in my treatment room. I like them to be very fluffy and very soft and just really, really lovely. Um, but, the washing was absolutely driving me nuts because sometimes I will do shorter treatments, but I'll see like nine clients has nine fleece blankets. Right? How bad is that? So um, as a student group on the diploma, we started talking about more energy efficient ways of covering and we were using, and this is probably something we can put in the chat box, but these like Turkish towels, they're really, really thin. They're really easy to store because they're so thin and that in between your client and your fleece blanket, really, really lovely. It's probably not something we can do going forward with a fleece blanket as well. But these Turkish towels, one on the top and one on the bottom, so easy to whip off and change, but it's, and it still allows for that um, um, texture for them to lie on rather than just the couch roll or lying on an uncovered treatment couch so just um where do you buy them i think it was amazon um i bought a couple from amazon to see how i'm going to get on with them so i'm going to lie on my couch this weekend or maybe even um yes amazon or um get my husband to lie on the couch and do a treatment for him which would be probably the first time in years for him um nefra takes them on holiday yes uh, they're awesome they dry really quick yes and I, they don't need ironing either they're awesome have some on the reopening list on amazon perfect maybe it's time just to buy one nephra so for you to try out and see whether you like it um treat yourselves give yourself a little budget of a treatment room revamp whatever it and it could be something like i don't know 10 20 15 pounds or something like that it doesn't have to be a crazy amount of money just to buy maybe some new little bits for your treatment room just to make it really nice um for you to experience that so those are my thoughts helen what have you got I was next? Going to say, um thank you Kelly. i was also going to say about um 
um, the sarongs. Um, oh, yes. It's actually Claire Stone that got me into the sarongs, wasn't it, Claire? <laughs> um, because they're lovely. You can get them in Pint's boutiques, do really nice, mm. really, really nice ones. But they're amazing because you can you can wash them on 60. I don't know if you're supposed to, but I wash mine on 60 and they're absolutely fine. But you can literally get so many in in a washing machine. Mm. Really great from an eco kind of perspective. Um, and that way you don't have to worry about natural and stuff because you can still disinfect the... Um, oh. Gosh, I've lost my power of speech today. Sorry, the couch underneath, but then just whip them off and get them in the in the wash. Um, so yeah, I think they're great. I I love them. Yeah. Pink's boutique has a discount on sarongs at the moment. That's so good because when I last looked, I was they're like twenty pounds each. I'm thinking, oh my god, how am I going to be able to buy nine of those? It's going to be a bit expensive. They last really, really well as well. Okay. They really do. Mine have lasted for quite a few years. Yeah, really, really well. Yeah. Okay. Pink's Boutique. I'll have a little look for a link now while you do your <laughs> okay. next. Lovely. So um, we're going to have a quick look at social media. So Karen's given some lovely ideas about what to do in terms of thinking about creating that space for working again and selling that experience to our clients on social media. And maybe if you're living with somebody, you could take um, obviously they can send um, maybe you know you can have them lying on the couch and you can take a picture of them or, or something like that just so that it really sets the scene and people can imagine themselves being on the couch I think we'd all be would would then get lots of comments saying you know I'd love I wish I was on that couch instead and things like that it'll really start to sort of bring that back to people um, so thinking about that um, one of the things that I early on lockdown, you know, when we had all these free seminars and webinars and I was, I was on every single one, you know, if you was flying towards you. And I went on a really good one that was run by a guy called Ryan Powers. And one of the first things he said in terms of kind of like, it, and it was actually around the idea of building a tribe and really um, making your social media work for you. And one of the first things he said was think about, before you do anything else, stop and think about what you like in other people's stuff that you see. So who do you follow, who inspires you, and why? And his advice was to actually go and literally go and trawl, you know, social media and really be clear about who it is that you want to follow, why you want to follow them, and what inspires that you, um, what, what it is that they do that inspires you. And I thought that was really, really interesting because he was saying, then you get a really clear idea of what it is that you like but you also get a really clear idea of what it is that you don't like what it is that you don't want to convey in your social media work what you don't want to convey to your tribe so that was a really good point um and it was interesting because i know um we've talked about this before karen haven't we about being authentic and genuine and kind of it's okay to be human so it's okay to be um, a person as well as just a brand. I think in our industry, we're more people than brands anyway. So I think we have that going for us in, in the first place. But that's really important too. Um, being human, being interesting. This was a good one, being interesting. Because <laughs> how many times do you see people's photographs of their food? And I'm like, I don't want to see your food. <laughs> Really, I'm not interested in seeing somebody's pudding. I mean, what's that going to do? It's just going to make me have pudding envy, isn't it? That's not a nice place to go. <laughs> I'm already a size bigger than I was at the beginning of lockdown. I don't need pudding envy as well. So it's about stuff that's relevant, but interesting as well. You know, stuff that's meaningful um, to our clients. And stuff that's relevant for now. And I guess this is really important for people that are really, really well organised. Because some people are amazing, aren't they? Is there anybody here that does their social media months in advance? No. Oh, thank goodness. That makes me feel so much better. <laughs> I think months in advance is a bit much. Does anybody do it a week in advance? I do it on a good week. And on a bad week, I just... <laughs> okay so definitely you do yeah yeah so it may be that if you do stuff a week in advance even then you might need to tweak stuff according to what changes um so just something to kind of be be aware of and i think at the moment particularly because things change on a daily basis 
um, that's probably quite important. Um, video content gets more engagement. I think we've covered that before, haven't we? Um, and it's interesting how people are often more willing to share videos than they are um, other types of content. Uh, focusing on your message. So something interesting I read about in an article, um, it was saying either write your posts down in the platform that you use and then go back and review them all or do kind of a bit more of an old school and, and do it in a journal. But really be clear about what it is you're trying to communicate over a period of time. And I guess that's going back to the idea of a tribe that we're sharing the same sort of ideas around lifestyle. You know, if you only use organic essential oils, then organic's going to be part of what you're trying to get across, isn't it, for example? So focusing on your message and being really clear about what that is and spreading that message across several posts so that everything makes sense and everything's coherent. Being easy to find. Now, this is something Karen does really, really well. You are the hashtag queen, aren't you, Karen? <laughs> <laughs> Only when I remember. <laughs> so, so every article I've read seems to say, use hashtags very generously um, and don't share the same content across several platforms um, because it just, obviously it just looks the same, doesn't it? Um, better to do one or two social media sites than do loads and do nothing. And this was an interesting one. Does anybody ask for help on their Facebook page? So quite a few, yeah, Emily's nodding, yeah, quite a few people um, in articles that I was reading. Um, and if you just Google build your tribe, you will find zillions of blogs and articles and stuff. There's some really interesting stuff out there, but they all kind of come back to these same sort of um, points. But quite a few seem to sort of say, you know, actually don't be afraid to say when you need something, whatever that might be, to actually ask your community. And I thought that was really interesting. And again, I think that's probably part of being human as well and being genuine. Another mistake apparently is to measure yourselves by what other people do. So it's all very well being inspired by somebody, but if you're looking at other people's stuff and thinking, oh, I can never do that. Nobody wants to hear what I've got to say. We need to get, we, that's where we need to turn to our oils, isn't it? And, we, <laughs> and our, our therapies and we'll do a little bit of work with ourselves to kind of give us the boost. Um, Responding to comments and engaging with community is obviously really important as well. So if you write something or you share something and it gets lots of engagement and then you don't have any response to that, obviously that's not as helpful. I think also that when if, if you post something on social media, you need to hang about and monitor that post for the first 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, the social media sites like it if you respond to people rather than just dumping content and running away or also not responding. So I think the first 20 minutes is ideal, maximum of four hours to respond to somebody who's commented, but to not respond at all, the social media platforms don't like it. And it's almost like speaking to somebody, they speak back to you and then you're totally ignoring them and the social media doesn't like that it will affect the algorithm around your uh, posting so um, and going back to hashtags i don't know whether anybody knows much about hashtags but when you write it so you have on instagram you have 30 hashtags that you can add to your post those 30 hashtags need to range from something that is as popular that when you put it in it's got 10,000 other people have used that hashtag and then so you need to have a range so like a hashtag that is used by a lot of people a hashtag that has then got about a thousand um it's been used like a thousand times or whatever and then gradually coming down so then a hundred and then ten so having that full range you also can't use that group of hashtags in every post that you do because in because the social media platform will know you're just being lazy you're not tailoring your post to this is why it's always better to post less but post really really well so don't feel like you have to post every day unless you've got something really important to say but when you do post do it really well so you give it maybe post three times four times a week and then hang around on that post for about an hour just going back and checking in um that um 
someone if someone has responded so that you can uh, reply back was really annoying when someone posts with an emoji you're like oh god i've got to thank you for doing that now <laughs> or someone just posts a thumbs up always gets to me that one and then you've got to post with a thumbs up back or something i have no idea but um always remembering to respond to anybody that takes the time to um and also if you guys see um i know some of you are so good at doing this because you you respond to our posts on the well school and i so appreciate it the more that your post gets a response even by you guys responding to each other's posts then social media will go oh look at her post getting loads of attention i know i'll show it to more people then because obviously people got an interest in it supporting each other this is why we ask you to put your social media handles in there not so that you can just nip around and be nosy at what someone else is doing or get that comparisonitis oh my god look what she's doing i'm not doing that i should be doing that nothing like that is that you can then have conversations with what we would term as colleagues and just supporting each other because it's then going to promote that person's page as well and also social media platform will see that you're engaging in community because it is all just about building community sorry helen i jumped on your thread then no, no, that's okay. I was also going to say it brings to mind then if you're going to schedule your posts, that you schedule them where you can then have time to look in. It's no good scheduling your post for nine o'clock if you're then out from nine till ten doing right. something. And also don't use a scheduler. Scheduler? I want to say scheduler. Is it schedule or schedule? I think you can say it both ways. It's like scone and scone, isn't that? Okay, that's fine then. Who knows? Does anybody else want to answer? <laughs> I don't know. As long as we're all right. It's fine. Um, so, yes, don't use a scheduler, scheduler to post stuff because, so, because the platforms will know that you've done that. Interesting. Isn't that? Wow. And the other thing is, of course, is thanking your community as well. Um, and one of the articles I read said you should thank your community once a week. And I was thinking, oh, I don't think I do It's quite that. a lot, isn't it? Once it is, isn't it? It's quite I suppose it depends how much activity is going on, really. I saw it? someone posting that once a week, like, oh, God, she's off again. Look. <laughs> she's obviously got nothing else to say. <laughs> And I guess, I guess it's like anything, isn't it? It's not always, you know, not everybody's seeing it, are they, the first time round? So, you know, one person no. might speaks, I guess. So, um, and to be fair, you know, we need a bit more of an attitude and a gra of gratitude, don't we, as a, as a nation, really? I think we could be better with that. So it's no bad thing, is that? Um, Claire, you were asking, how do you find out the stats on the hashtags? When you start writing the hashtags in, it brings up the numbers and tells you. Oh, sorry, Nefra responded. Sorry, Nefra. Um, and Meg's just saying about somebody does uh, Bloom Content Creations running a great course on Instagram, discounted to £35 mm. until the 12th of June. Oh, yeah. there we go. There's loads of stuff out there at the moment. And there's loads of experts as well running some really fantastic courses. Yeah. There's also quite a bit of dire stuff out there like anything. We know that with the Roman therapy, don't we? <laughs> experts um, also it's totally exhausting because you get a grip on it and then instagram changes it's like right you guys have figured out how to make this work so we're going to change it now keep you on your toes it's really annoying and i think one of the most important things at this point in time and we saw a little wave of them and then i saw several marketing people actually put in posts on saying this is the reason why you don't do it but one of the things we saw early, early on in, in lockdown was people saying, can you, can, you know, my oh, friends follow my page, follow my page, page, you know, completely random people liking the page and then having no engagement. And that's really bad, isn't it, for the algorithms? Mm. That's not going to do you any favours. That's going to do you more harm than good. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think we, we've stopped seeing that. Well, I've stopped seeing that wave of it in my news feed. But I've certainly had a good two or three weeks chunk where I saw people doing that. Yeah. Um, and it is pretty much the kiss of death, really. So, <laughs> were you sitting there going, Stop following me? <laughs> <laughs> it's not very often you hear that, right? Okay, um, so the next thing that I wanted to uh, kind of say that I've put in my notes here, um, don't wait for the government to tell you when to get back to work. Oh, <gasps> shock horror! Can you believe I'm saying that? Wait, what, what, what? 
but what I mean is your clinic does not need to wait for the government to say that it can reopen. You can open before if this is what you want. I am obviously not talking about massage because that's very illegal and I wouldn't tell you to do that. What I mean is your consultations with clients, mm -hmm. your virtual ones. When we started out in all of this, you may have thought that is not an area I want to go into trying to think about getting your head around the technology and the um, digital forms, et cetera, et cetera. But now we've all been Zooming for the last three months. Zoom is like part of life that actually it might be a thought that you could, something that you'd think now that you could do. So is it uh, that you've had time to reflect or um, is it something that you would be willing to consider now? Is it something that your clients, now that they've Zoomed around a lot, uh, would they be more open to the idea? Have you thought about reaching corporate clients who now have employees working from home? I don't know how many people I've spoken to whose companies are saying, do you know what, we're all set up for you working from home. Well, just carry on. We don't have to then pay for a building and rates and everything else. I personally, I think this is going to become a massive mental health issue if you've got people working at home for hours and hours and hours and Zooming. How exhausted are people? People are so exhausted. Working on Zoom is absolutely exhausting. People are really tired. There's no break from it. It's so intense. You can't have a Zoom meeting. You know, like when you have not not that I, I've been out of the corporate workplace for, oh my gosh, ages and ages. But you know, when you're in a meeting and you could have a quick look out of the window, you can't do that in Zoom. Can you imagine someone having a Zoom meeting and you're like, it's so rude, you can't do it. So it's so intense the whole time. It's absolutely exhausting. And I think people are starting to feel that fatigue already. But now the companies are thinking, actually, this is a much cheaper way for us to work. We'll have people working from home. My brother's already had that conversation with his boss and he's said, you know, just carry on at home now. I don't think we'll even bother bringing people back to the office. But, um, and what we've noticed inquiries into the well retreat is that the corporate sector are contacting us. Can you help us with our employees' well-being? Have you even considered tap, uh, tapping into corporate um, workplace aromatherapy? I did a really big workshop with the BBC recently. They had over 300 staff furloughed, no, yes, 300 staff furloughed at home on a particular department. And they asked me to um, host a Zoom where they could Zoom in and um, learn about aromatherapy for well-being. Literally bit my hand off and they want me to come back. And I put it on my personal um, Facebook profile. And I've now had the county council of my hometown get in touch and like oh so you're doing this we would love this we've got a thousand employees that we'd like you to zoom with and I'm like oh my god oh, I don't know about that a thousand people listening to me I'm not used to I'm not used to my children listening to me let alone a thousand people but they are looking for ways of supporting their colleagues at home they've got budgets for it untapped budgets these budgets you to be set aside for people to go in and do workplace massage it's not happening now so, and they want, they need to spend that budget as if they don't spend it, they'll lose it. So it might be the time to start looking at what else it is that you can offer. Um, Father's Day is coming up. People might want something a little bit different. People might not want to work, um, walk, um, head to the shops next week. Um, they might not want to buy something from Amazon for dad. So have you thought about doing massage lessons? I'll teach you how to do a massage for your dad. You do a one-to-one -one Zoom session. You could even, maybe even get dad booked in, teach dad how to do the massage and then we'll all benefit. But you know, such an easy thing to do. Have you thought about even doing, you know, we're teaching our clients self-massage. Have you thought about doing some massage lessons for your clients? That might be another way um, to expand on your current skill set as well. Um, one of the things I've been doing, Karen, with um, corporate clients, I can't go into to massage. Um, we've been having one-to-one -one, uh, health and well-being sessions. So the first one was very much kind of asking a lot of the questions you'd ask in an initial consultation. Mm -hmm. So things like, you know, how are you sleeping? Are you getting out? For, at the time, you could only go out once a day. Are you getting out once a day for your walk? Um, 
you know, how's your neck, back and shoulders feeling, that kind of thing. Um, and we did some of that and I gave them some very individual tips for each person. We did that as our first session. And then after that, what we've done is literally, we both sit in front of our computer screens and I give them a routine and I show them because I demo it on me and they do it as well. And we go through 20 minutes of, of self massage. So they, because they won't go away, even before I'd sent them, you know, this is, this is a routine you can go through and I'd, I'd, you know, send it an attachment to the email and stuff. But you know that people won't always go and do that. Whereas yeah. if you're in the room with them and you talk them through it, they're more likely to do it. It's like meditation, isn't it? Some people go to a meditation class, but they find it hard to meditate at home unless mm -hmm. they've got somebody in the background. So then perhaps use a YouTube video or something like that. Um, and I found it's been really, really good. And what we've tended to do with some people, I've done it more sort of half and half. So there's been some relaxation um, and some visualization work at the end with them with their eyes closed and focusing on their breathing and, and things as well. And with other people, it's been more about the massage. Um, and with some of them, I've then followed up with massage products that they're then going to, to buy as well. So I think there's a lot more we can do than we're doing. And I think we can get our um, our message, if you like. We can get our, you know, we can get our our tools, if you like, to people in a way that we haven't ever had to really think about before. Um, but it's really popular. And at the end of the day, like you say, they've got budgets that they're not using for other things. Mm -hmm. So, and all employers will have a responsibility towards health and well-being. Mm -hmm. And I think what we're seeing is we're seeing more and more articles coming out now saying people are fatigued by Zooms. Mm -hmm. and that actually, your home is supposed to be your safe place. Yeah. If your clients are having to bring into their home people they don't like because let's face it unfortunately in an office environment a lot of people work with people that they don't necessarily yeah. like yeah. do you want that person to see your one bed flat do you want that person to see your child walking around and back do you know what I mean it's very invasive as well is it into our own space so I think our clients are struggling with that I think actually some positive zooms <laughs> would be really nice for them as well mm. um, so yeah definitely definitely think about contacting um, and, and if you if you're thinking of going to um, going to a particular em employer, go to the ones where you've got links in already because they'll be easier to get in the door. Because it is hard to uh, I've found in some instances it's been really hard to get in the door with some companies. Some companies are really really good, um, and quite often the ones that, in my experience, the ones that have tended to be better, the ones I go in and massage in have tended to be ones where I've either had a link individually or um, they normally have, they're normally sort of Swedish or Finnish or Danish kind of companies that tend to be a bit more proactive, I think, with um, well-being and mental health. Mm. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, just a thought, but I think it's a massive untapped market. And like you say, so many more people now won't be won't be going back into an office environment they'll be working from home won't they yeah yeah they'll be on their computers even more <laughs> so will we <laughs> but that was stiff necks and rounded shoulders um, okay so what have we got next helen what are we looking at next uh we're looking at newsletters next so does anybody send email newsletters to anybody using things like mailchimp and things yeah yeah so um we're thinking about just again going back to that with fresh eyes really and thinking about what's your engagement rate um get somebody else to read it that's something i'm really aware of i haven't got anybody else to read you know somebody that's not a client if you like to read your newsletter and see what they they make of it and ask your clients for some feedback mm. ask yourself is it helpful is it providing something useful is it something you'd want to read mm. So are you offering value in that? You know, is there um, a link to a video that you can give them? Um, one on self-massage, um, perhaps something on um, massaging with somebody else, if they've got somebody else living at home with them. I did a Zoom with them, um, with a, um, with two partners, and that was quite interesting. <laughs> Especially they're doing it with a, with a little sort of um, doing on their phone rather than a bigger screen. So it's even more challenging. But it can be done, you know. Um, but again, things like that, adding value to it. Um, 
And Karen, you'd suggested about doing things like an aromatherapy Q&A on Facebook Live or something, hadn't you? So I think with um, when you run a business like we do, and despite us being so proactive on social media, we are not in control of whether we reach those people on social media. So we have, you know, however many numbers on on our social media platforms but when we stick a post out there that doesn't mean that we reach all those people however what um many of the marketing coaches social media um coaches that we have connected with the well school they will say in fact one of them said and i was like that's a that's a really good phrase email is king everything that you do you should be reaching out for people's email addresses and having that newsletter list that you know that you can contact people. So when you're sending out newsletters, um, do you read it and think, oh, I would be really tough to have that in my inbox. If it bores you to read it, don't send it. Don't contact them asking them to do stuff for you. See where you can offer more value offering them as much value as possible so doing offering a video on breath work offering a video on self-massage maybe um oh, it's such a roundabout way of doing it but keeping google god happy with your website creating a video on your phone or on zoom or whatever uploading the content to youtube downloading the youtube link to your website sticking that in an email sending that out and that will do wonders to your seo because the whole thing will be like oh this is great look at all this clicking all the way back into the website and that that keeps google really really happy so creating videos so if you so i ventured on facebook live this week i don't like facebook live because i get i talk really really fast and i also I blush and my, my lips stick to my teeth. <laughs> so I look like I've got false teeth because I'm, mm, God. so I'm not very good on Facebook Live. And also I talk too long. So then the last two Facebook Lives, I've tried to decrease what I'm saying, but I haven't. I've just spoken really fast to get as much content in in 10 minutes, which is what I'd limited myself to. But Facebook Live, it's, it's a really weird thing, but it engages so many more people than a post. It really, really does. I, I honestly can't bear myself on video or anything like that. But the response to a Facebook Live in comparison to a normal written post or a photo, I think it's unbelievable. So if you haven't done a Facebook Live yet, try and venture onto it. Um, it's so super easy. If you're using a computer, if you've got a, so I've got a MacBook and um, it's normally got Safari on there and that doesn't support Facebook Live. So I had to download Google Chrome. It's really super easy to do. And then it's just a matter of clicking a live button and then it just starts. It counts down so you can position yourself properly. But it's really, really easy and people can message you and stuff. So it's really nice to get engagement in there. If you don't like Facebook Live, record a video using Zoom, using your camera, whatever, and do a little um, video on, I don't know, any kind of particular topic, or do a video on a guided meditation on breathwork. For those of you that did that session with Declan, he did an example of breathing techniques to help with stress. Just take that, re-record -re it in your own voice and send them the link to that. Send them a newsletter link with something that's actually a real pleasure to receive, giving them as much value as they possibly can. Facebook Lives, even offering to do a, a Q&A on Facebook Live. Haven't seen my clients for a little while, so I'm gonna be hanging around on say, Facebook Live at six o'clock, come and join me, drop some questions in, let me know what it is that um, I can answer for you. That might be another really interesting thing. And then the other thing as well, um, either in a newsletter or if you prefer personal touch or if you've got people who live close by to you, pop in a self-care sheet in the post or through their letterbox, you know, um, just detailing how they can be looking after themselves. Just a few hints and tips of things they can be doing just to make sure they stay well. Um, and then they see that you're thinking about them as well. There's a whole heap of work in our session today. There's a whole heap of work in here. And some of you might be thinking, oh my God, grief, there's so much to begin. Just choose one or two of these. Like, don't think that you've got to put all of these things out there. We're just throwing a load of ideas and you work out what's right for you guys, isn't it? 
I don't want you to walk away going, oh my God, it's exhausting even just going to that session, let alone following up with all the work, <laughs> other than lying on the couch, on my massage couch and listening to nice music. We should all be doing that, if possible. Okay, Helen, do you want to... Um... Yeah, I was just going to say, Karen, I think there's something really nice about when you're saying about putting something in the post. It's so old school, but it's so yeah. nice, isn't it? And I think the other thing is, I think partly because a lot of stuff you get in the post is bills. So it's nice to get something that's lovely and different and meaningful and that somebody's thinking of you. And, you know, our clients still have, you know, their Ruby wedding anniversaries or their 60th birthday or something, don't they, during lockdown. So it's nice to kind of acknowledge that if you can as well. I think the really nice thing as well about getting stuff through the post, and I think the one of the biggest things we can forget is that some of our clients don't use social media. So I have some older clients who are retired who simply do not use social media. Mm -hmm. So I'm not engaging with them unless I send them a newsletter or I send them a card in post it's just, or a text or a message. You know what I mean? It's just not happening. They just don't engage in that way. They're not interested in joining social media and they're never going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's their words, not mine. So that's fine. That's absolutely fine. But we don't want to forget those because actually if you've got a core group of clients who are there, they're still your tribe. You still need to look after them. We just need to do it in different ways, don't we, I guess? Mm. Um, so I think there's really something nice about putting something in the post. And if you can do it in a really nice coloured envelope, I know it sounds really stupid, <laughs> but it's really nice. It's really distinct. So if you've got I don't know, let's just say your colours um, for your business are purple. If you could get some purple envelopes, how lovely would that be for somebody to pick that up and find a nice little self-care sheet with a little handwritten note at the bottom? Um, we also have in the well retreat that we sent out as random gifts for people, little rollerballs. They want two mil rollerball bottles. They're really lovely. And we fill that with oil. Um, carrier oil and then just add a couple of drops of our synergies in there as well and send those out as gifts and they're really nice and they're not expensive to buy and would make a really lovely little thoughtful gift as well for those people that you want to um, know much smaller nafra much much smaller i will go and see if i can dig one out i would I leave think, you guys I, with think nefra, I think that's about 10 mil the, is it a roll of, oh it's not okay oh okay maybe it looks smaller then i'm <laughs> sorry I think yours are stubby, aren't they? I think Karen's might be um, stubbier. Um, so when we do the additional oils um, courses, we have these little one mil bottles. Ah, okay, yeah, I can see the difference. Yours is more like this size, isn't it, Nefra? Oh, yeah. You just called my bottle stubby. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but it is more cute. Oh my gosh, that's so nice. Yes, he you went in. That's what I'm going for. That's not stubby. <laughs> I think that I think these might be a one mil. I think, but um, yes, yeah, so we just fill that up with some carrier oil and then um, put a drop of synergy in it and then send that out because we have all of their details on file, so I know what they're allergic to and what we need to be careful with. So um, you know. That's it's quite often we know that maybe. And like you get something like um, I don't know, fifty in a pack or something like that um so that might be something that you might want to consider where are those from i don't know i'm honestly an amazon girl because everything when i have an idea i don't just think oh, i'll do that next week i was like oh, i need to do that now let's get on amazon prime <laughs> do it tomorrow before i lose the will to live with the idea so probably amazon i'll find out for you if you want I'll send you a link so see you just too bianca thanks for coming Oh. I'll send you the link, Meg, no problem. So should we just round up, Karen? We had some, some journaling points, didn't we? Um, in, in terms of just thinking about... Shall I put those in the chat box, Helen? Yeah, that's a good idea. And then we can have a, a few minutes, can't yeah. we? Can I just, before we finish off with the, um, are you okay to stick those in the chat box, Helen? Yep, I'll do that. One of the things that I, I did want to finish with is that remember that you are not necessarily the same therapist as you were before you went into lockdown, regardless of what your activities have been since the 23rd of March to now. 
you are now an entrepreneur that's had that's lived to tell the tale of a forced closure of your business you are still ready and ready to go you still have got a passion for your business you still got a vision for your business and you still want to treat people that is really really awesome you might have a new virtual practice you might have chosen i am not that kind of therapist to be treating people virtually i like to be face to face both super brilliant you might now have corporate clients you might not have considered corporate clients you might like to get some corporate clients you are no longer an aromatherapist you are now a well-being practitioner you are advising on well-being um, how to look after themselves a little bit more you might be teaching a little bit of self massage as well so you're now sort of like a little teacher of massage as well you know you have got your skill set has been expanded you have used this time not to be forced to a standstill but to go oh right okay this is where i am i need to adapt this is brilliant so so brilliant so creative and it's really really quite special um, you might have trained in some new skills. You might have revisited old skills, gone back through to your books, gone back to your A&P. When did we last pick up an A&P book and refreshed information on A&P? I bought a new holistic A&P book recently. That's been really lovely to read. But who are you now? What kind of therapist is going to emerge from all of this under your business banner? how would you define you and your business now is it different do you want it to stay that way this is what your social media the video content your facebook live content all needs to reflect the new therapist that you have become during this time it might be that none of those things have happened you've taken the time you've had three months off enjoyed the downtime, enjoyed not, people not taking from you and just looked after yourself. And you might be this really refreshed therapist that has really missed her clients and ready to see her clients in exactly the same format that you did before, because that really, really worked for you. And that's what your Facebook, or that's what your social media content needs to reflect. I am still here and I am still the same and I'm still ready and waiting for you. So I think that question is, but to ask ourselves, uh, who are we now? And then that content can be built around that. Okay, so um, Helen's gonna pop some additional journal points into the chat box. And then one of the things that we would love for you to do now is to write down the first three words that come to your mind that describe how you feel right now. You don't have to share them, it's quite personal. Has it changed from the beginning of the session to now? Does it feel any different? And for some of you, you, you would have been here when we did this a few weeks ago as well. So it'd be interesting to compare back to a few weeks ago, what you, what you said. Yeah, especially if you came to the first one. That would be really interesting. Good. Okay. Um, so before we finish off, we just want to tell you some other things that we've got coming up um, within the Well School. So we've got another free webinar on Saturday morning at 11 a.m. And it is, um, we are, have got um, a lady coming in. She's a nutritionist. And her and I are designing a course for introduction to nutrition for holistic therapists. So it's not a course on nutrition. It's not going to make you a pretend nutritionist. What it is going to do is give you enough information to understand the condition that your client is coming to your treatment room with, how that might be connected to their nutritional habits or how it could be impacted by better nutritional habits. So you're not going to be advising them ways to change their a diet or sitting and, and recommending vitamins or anything like that. But so much of what our clients come to our treatment rooms with is actually coming from poor gut health, 
So um, having a little bit more information there just to make you a bit more informed. So we're having an introduction session on Saturday. Um, it's completely free. So if you want to come and hang out on Saturday, 11 o'clock, you'd be very welcome. That's in the school, uh, on the school website um, for you to book. We've also got a new course. So we have started a series of um, CPD courses on women's health. We've just released the um, women's health course um, this week. Um, and then in July, we've got the vaginal and pelvic health course coming up. So this is going to be a course dealing with issues around um, the pelvic area and the um, for females so looking at things like endometriosis and thrush and PCOS um, dryness and all other conditions that our female clients might be dealing with that actually a lot of aromatherapy doesn't venture into but it is so incredibly useful for so Helen and I are creating a course on this um, vaginal and pelvic health and that's going to be run in July that's on the website now that's a kind of a six-point CPD course and then on the uh, second stroke third of July we've got our additional oils course we love doing additional oils so you get a little kit of oils in the post um, and then on our webinar session we open these oils and experience them together and we learn more about these oils and Helen and I present those to you we are doing um, in our next session, Yari, not Larry, as stated in our email, <laughs> curse you, protective predictive text, Saro, Blue Spruce, Cape May and Yuzu, some really beautiful essential oils and we would love for you to come to that. Any of our courses are all, you can part pay and we understand that times are tough um, so we're offering sort of payment plans so if there's anything that you fancy just drop us an email we can help you to part pay for things um, and try and hopefully make it possible. Helen was there anything else you wanted to do, say before we finish off? Um, no just a couple of little things uh, there's lots of people saying the women's health course is great Karen because obviously the content for that is great. Oh, thank you. Oh, I didn't see all of those. Yeah, you made me so happy. I literally cried and laughed my way through writing that course. Honestly, I was absolutely exhausted. I had to have this week off just to recover. Cried. It was thing, wasn't it, Karen? Yeah, it's exhausting and lovely. Yeah. Um, and you're running it. There's another one of that running in September, isn't there? Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, this one was fully booked. Mm -hmm. Fully booked in four days. It was unbelievable. Um, and, and what's really lovely about it is that it doesn't just what we found was a lot of women's health thing it was limited to periods menopause pregnancy that's it that is literally all that happens to the female body in a lot of aromatherapy books so we've kind of expanded a little bit more on that and and ranged from the teenager all the way to kind of end of life so um and all in between so it's been really nice i'm so glad you guys are enjoying it thank you so much thank you um and Linz is also asking whether the nutrition one on the 13th will also be will that be recorded karen yes yeah Okay. If I remember, <laughs> I had a diploma session last night and forgot till I was halfway through. <laughs> if I'm going to stop recording now so people don't hear me saying stuff. <laughs> yes. Deeper, deeper. Okay. I think that's it.